People. People. Yo, people. People. You know what time it is. It's the One Devotion. You're now watching the Daily Devotion podcast live and direct. Preacher boy. <laughs> no, it's true though. But, 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 check the joke. I was free waiting town yesterday. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yo, check it. Oi, 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 check the flame. Just start calling preacher boy. I'm calling, I'm calling the preacher boy because this is a joke. I was free in town yesterday to the library. Anyway, Creators Hub has got a book club coming on the 19th of November. Please get involved. It's on Instagram. But anyway, the joke was this. We see this girl in the library who was studying. She's like, oh my gosh, how do you know him? I said, oh, it was, it was the mm. wet girl. She's like, oh, I seen him in town. He approached me <laughs> talking about Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> preacher boy. Yeah, preacher oh, boy. If not us, yeah. who? I was if not us, who? Now, Marcus is both left handed and right handed and ridiculous. Keandre is the same. How does that help him? In the world of the fighters that are all that yeah. are all orthodox. Yeah, I think I think I think that definitely helps him being ambidextrous, but he's, he's predominantly left-handed, so yeah. he's a southpaw. Yeah. But he's a switch hitter anyway, so he boxes left-handed and right-handed every day. Every, every, everything he learns, he learns from orthodox and he learns from southpaw. And um, like I said, he picks it all up on both sides so easy. He doesn't get mistaken. His coordination, his rhythm, everything's always always. It comes natural to you, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, yeah, that's about it. I think. What, what did you say again? What was the question? I was saying like, how does that give him an advantage? Yeah, that was the one. So because obviously, so if half of the, go on, go on. Yes, yeah, so as I was saying, because he's left-handed, but but he's right-footed. No, no, he's left-handed and, and left-footed, but he can use his right hand. So let me, let me start that again. As I was saying, <laughs> <laughs> we are one. We are one that, yeah, we're keeping that for the. Yeah. I'm better with my left hand and left foot. That's See, the one. Yeah. He's left footed, left handed, but he's ambidextrous. He can use both hands. Does, um, does Dave uh, ever get involved in the coaching side? Well, I know he does. I don't he's know if. Got, he, Danny Morrow? No, no, no. So he's, he, Dave don't coach um, Danny Morrow. I don't, I don't even think he manages him anymore. But okay. he's got a set of fighters that he trains. He trains um, Liam, Joe. Uh, Moyo um, and a few others. He trains Stevie bits and bats, but Stevie's not a main trainer, but he's more of a manager yeah. than the rest of them are amateurs. So he does good there, but he does come down to my gym um, and gets involved with like the sparring and whatnot with some of the kids in like, the gym uh, and Raheem and gets involved. But yeah. um, personally, as in coaching me, no, no, he no. Coach me is like he's just solely manager. But me and Dave, it's not just a manager relationship. We're friends. We're friends. friends before, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. friends before boxing. Um, and obviously we'll be friends after it. So it's more of a friendship relationship, but like it's good I speak to him about everything, anything that I need, I'll message him all the time. Yeah, so that's good. Like, just the same with him, the way he's guided my career, I've got mm-hmm. massive, massive respect for him. Yeah. Um, and it, it works out good, but like, yeah, back to the coaches and back to Liam, like um, we're really, really good friends. I talk to Liam about everything. It's not just mm-hmm. boxing oriented. It's just life. Like, yeah, it really, it really is just life. Like, He's been through the same life experiences that I've been through and vice versa. Like, I w- he tells me he used to go to the gym because he didn't have no yeah, 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 thing yeah, like that. Yeah, you know I mean? So that's where he spent his time. He spent his time at, at 15 in the gym all the time around the fighters and whatnot. And I can empathize with that. I've been around yeah, that. I've yeah. done that. And so it's just good to know. Like, and a lot of people don't know this. Liam is a sick box of blood like we do the the little body sparring and thing there and yo my man's no, still got it still, yeah, yeah, so yeah. he's not just one of the people that just can talk a good game he's, he's still got it in it so can live it. I, can yeah, live it. I, I value everything that he's got to say to me like everything that he shows me like the things that we work on it's good man that's sick you know because I do feel like is he saying like which is an important point now women's football is normalised I've always just seen it as football yeah. like I've never seen it as as, as men's football and women's football as like boxing it's boxing do you think that because or do you think that the lioness is doing so well in the competition also bringing it home do you think that's really given a lot of respect to um to female sportswomen yeah 100 percent. i feel like there's so many more people girls that just aspire to 
be like that and want to play football and make it like easier for them to get there. Because yeah. obviously, like what they've achieved now, women's football, I think it's huge. It's massive, isn't it? Yeah. And it's levels as well. Like I support Arsenal, so I'm gonna yeah Arsenal. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're top of the league, isn't it? <laughs> the top of the league right now. I'm sure Arsenal ladies top of the league as well. So, just say it. But they've always had some dark players. Alex Scott, you know. Yeah, no, I think he appreciated what he had. I think, he, you know, and I think you see, you know, the messages he uploaded about me, <sighs> his family, you know. He, he started to really see what people had actually done behind the scenes mm. to enable him and to get to that place of appreciation at such a young age. People do get to that place, but usually it takes a number of years, mm. years in your mm. 20s, mm. you know, maturity. But he, he hit that point very, very early. Mm. Again, everything was early with Josh, mm. you know. Um, and I, He was just grateful, grateful for, you know, for everything that had been done for him. And I think he was so... He had this strong belief that he was going to repay that through, you know, through everything he was achieving was going to, you know, and he didn't have to. And I think it's very quite iconic. You know, the last the first thing and last thing he ever purchased was the watch for me. He got his money and the first thing he did was go and spend it on me. And the first thing I said was, no, you don't have to because I didn't want him to spend his money on me. Mm. I wanted to spend his money on him. And he was just like, no, mum, this is for you. And, you know, I've never worn it. I've never taken it out of the box since mm. and, and put it on because... And you could see how much he appreciated the love and the patience and the determination for him. Mm. You know, so he, so by the time it, it dawned on him about everything, mm. you know, he wanted to kind of give that back, mm. yeah. you know. And, and he did, and then that was the day he died. So... Obviously, apart from Apple Yard, who's on your radar at the minute? Who do you personally? I know it might be anyone and everyone, but is anyone like personally that you would so, you want to fight or? Personally, not really. Like this is all business. Like at the end of the day, mm. boxing is a business. It's it's stepped away from that that emotional yeah um, emotion attachments and personality or whatever. This is like it's literally business. And I've said since for year for years now that I want an English title this yeah. year. So. I, I will be English okay. champion early next year. 100%. Speaking. You for, you, Christian's for Speaking. that title as well, Speaking. hasn't he? Christian fought for an eliminator for the English. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, Speed into it, just as my guy. I was watching an interview. This interview was, I think it was back in April, where you mentioned you wanted to fight Ryland Charlton. Yeah. Now, did I, is that something that's still interesting? That's, that's a big works. fight. That's, that's a big fight. That's that's right, Ryland right, Charlton. Yeah, like, right. I remember he, he, he had that small upset against Joe Laws where he knocked him out. And then he lost he, in Liverpool. To Marku? No, no, no. He lost to Marku and then he lost in Liverpool. After oh, he's lost again since, yeah. yeah. He's not on my level. No, <laughs> no, no disrespect to him. Yeah. If you purely boxing, his even, even fighting, he's, mm. he's not on my level. No, I like no the fight because it's a classic box. Yeah, he goes puncher. Punch, yeah, so he can play. I, he can I will hit. make that fight so boring. I will mm. ping him with the jab all around. Take all it, man. Yeah, we'll take and that. that. Yeah. And honestly, <laughs> he, he's not on my level. But if he, if he did win a fight, I'm happy to take the fight because he's he's got a good record. Yeah. And he beat some names and good he's profile. been there on yeah good profile. So I'd happily take that fight. But we was so we spoke about that fight ages ago mm. with, with Eddie and whatnot and on socials and we approached his managers and whatnot they didn't want the fight they initially said and this is out there on interviews I'm not just saying it not just making it up they said they wanted an easier fight after the Marku loss to build his profile yeah. and, and get back onto that and, and then, then he took that fight took, and lost again and then he just took another loss um, <laughs> so for me that fight will never happen like no. because he knows he knows that will never happen yeah he's he's levels. Levels. No, no, I'm gonna start recording now. So you're not recording that. You're not recording that. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was fire, fam. It was it was Bro, the sound's oh. on. Come on. So the mindset over there, do you know what I mean? It's completely, even though it's only 45 minutes away, it's just different. Like, it's deep making, down there. Yeah, making your first grand. Like, there was a difference in them times. Making your first grand in Sheffield, people wanted to buy you change, your cars, and things like that. My first grand, what I wanted to do, which I did, was buy an artillery. Mm -hmm. You see me? Just look after Protect, myself. Protect, so that's, even though it's only 45 minutes away, 
that shows the levels of the yeah. lifestyle is yeah. different. Cause I would think, you know, a car and thing. I was thinking, anyone bother me, I'm going to put them on the bike. Mm-hmm. You see me? No, mm-hmm. you know, I know, I've no man touching me. Mm-hmm. You see me? So, yeah, things like that. So, yeah, um, I think that, that molded me and changed me, like, who I was and who I am now because I had, yeah, um, like, yeah, an advantage to go, not an advantage, just, like, I had, like, option to go out of town on weekends and stuff, and that opened up my mindset because I'm a Manchester man and Sheffield man, like, the gap now is different now, mm-hmm. everyone is, That's like, yeah. Closer. Yeah, the gap's close and still, but even though it was only it's only forty five minutes away, but the mindset's just completely different. When's your birthday? 9th of August. Uh nineteenth of Jan. I used to uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about that one. What? I, always, <laughs> I always have this thing where I get confused with the nineteenth and the twentieth. I don't know why. More than every year. Is it? Yeah. I I am with him all the time. So like I don't really when I was young, I'd be here and there and everywhere, whereas since I had children, I literally dedicated all my time to my children. I still play football and I still do certain bits, but 99% of the time, I will be with Keandre. Like, people ask me, like, what, what do you want to do, though? I think, you're like, I'm, I'm 30 next month. But since I was 20, 21, I've always just thought, since I had a child, I just want to put all my work into my child and make him something like if he wanted to play golf if he said he wants to play golf next week we'll start obviously i'll try and encourage him to stay in boxing because he's put a lot of work into it so you sure you want to do but if he said he wants to play golf we'll go and play golf and i'll, and I'll push him with that and i'll take him and play golf every day and study and learn that because as rodron was saying before devoted dominic <laughs> we were um, very good at football when we was young and my dad used to take me to the matches week in week out sometimes we pick dominic up um, if his mum weren't bringing him, mm. then he'd be there supporting us every week. He'd have advice before the game, yeah. he'd have advice Half time. after the game. During the game, during and the after game. the game. <laughs> but then when I got to like, he, he'd even, my, my dad would even take us to training. Midweek, he'd take us to the field to learn how to kick mm. better or to yeah. do skills. Or he'd, Control he'd, 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 He was very hands on as a dad and he'd do a lot with us. But then as soon as I got to wait, um, 16, it was just like. The world becomes a more interesting big now, place. Yeah, he, the world comes an interesting place for me. My dad thought I was big now, whereas they're the vital years, I think, when you get to... 14, 15, you get to, 16. Yeah, if your, dad, if your parent can help you keep you on the right track through to 18, 19, 20 and 21, they're the most important, valuable years to help yourself to be successful in something. So that's just why I always try and be with him and be there to help guide him in the right place and keep him on the right path. But there's many paths out there, yeah, as you know, yeah, it's true, it's true. you can stray onto yeah, yeah, and true, find it hard to get off. The first thing we stop doing is talking to anybody. I don't, I don't even, you know, sometimes I talk out loud. I talk to myself. I like talking to myself. Oh, goodness. That's a weirdo. That's right. That's a weirdo. Hard to I don't mind admitting it. No, you are attacking one of my vulnerabilities yeah, there. <laughs> But yeah, we don't talk. And they do say it is good to talk. It's absolutely good to talk. Because actually once you start to talk and you're honest and you're on a level, then you find out, oh, it's not just me who feels, feels like that. Like that yeah. He feels like that. She feels like That's then I just, I just begin to realise that managing your mental health is quite a normative thing. What I'm more interested in then is, is, is who bred that into you? who instilled those values into you to have that kind of viewpoint of the world? Um, what experience has you had that have shaped the way that you perceive situations and life and to always have that balance? Yeah, um, a lot of my insight is based from pain, mm. trauma, mm. and a, a, that overwhelming feeling of pain. And as a parent, if you've got that awareness, it gives you something in you to think, I don't want my child to feel like I ever did in the world. Mm. And a lot of people think they know me and they haven't got a clue about me. Like, for example, um, some people know this, but some people don't know this. I was actually born in Nigeria. God! <laughs> Nubian! <laughs> Nubian! <laughs> Which you there. might not necessarily yeah. think. So I was born in Nigeria and... Mm. Um, 
I actually faced my first trauma, major trauma, when I was 18 months old. My actual real dad, so we lived in Nigeria, mom, dad, normal family, swimming pools, very fortunate in life. And my dad had a massive head-on collision, spike through his brain and was left with brain damage in the mental age of 11-year-old. Now, as a little girl, I'd lost my dad in one sense, but he was there traumatising me over and over. His behaviour meant that there was a lot of abuse, neglect, etc, etc. So when you see someone else experience neglect or abuse or rejection, you don't just see it, you feel it. And me being able to feel what Josh was feeling, his heart, my heart, vroom. And that's what people see. They don't see Alice and Josh, they see we're intertwined. And we were, and we still are. And the pain I suffered as a child growing up, all that trauma, as soon as I saw Josh's trauma, it was literally like I morphed straight into his heart. And that was it. It was my job to put my trauma and pain to the side and make sure that you are not left traumatised for the rest of your life. You're not in pain for the rest of your life. And my love for you and my ability to see within your heart and soul, that was it. We were, Our team was born. Merged. No, oh, that's powerful still. Yeah. Trust me. Um, um, have you got any aspirations to play for like England? Yeah. Like England or them teams there? Or? I used to go to England camps. Okay. When I was, <clears throat> when I was younger. And I, I, the last camp was like, Come on, what's here? England camp, St. George's Park. Sick. But don't forget to mention you are on call for England. So, <laughs> you know, in the next couple of weeks, you could be flying out to Portugal to play for them. So, explain this England camp to you. Like, are you playing against teams in Europe? Like, what, what? Like, explain all that. Word. So, there's like, there's training camps and then you have like a fixture camp. Okay. I've always been on the training camps. Yeah. Um, so, you'd go there for like three days, four days. Then you'll just park, train every day. Um, but I've never like played like a country yet, so that's okay. something that um I would I would want to do one day if I keep going. Yeah. So it's mad because now, so in training camps, yeah, you have a group from say United Sheffield United, and then another group from. Like your Arsenal team, Man City, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chelsea. Are there like, first of all, have you got any friends in other clubs who you play against? You're like, yeah, what, go on. Yeah. And is there a significant level between the, like all the different clubs? Like, is there where it's okay, okay, um, we played City now. Is it still, is Manchester City on the still kind of level? If you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I've I've got friends <laughs> from like Arsenal, Man City, City, all over. But like when you come to camp, they're like there's like this to sit. Yeah. Yeah, to sit. And so like, you have to match you have to like I will walk in with my Sheffield United kit on and then someone over there's got Arsenal and it's like Yeah. Yeah, I've I'm, I'm got Sheffield United on but yeah. it's still like it, it's still levels, but it's still very competitive. Yeah. Wow. And you stay there overnight. Or yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like three days. But are you able to like to mix like after like the games and fixtures, or all the people stay in their own kind of factions? Um. So you'd have like a roommate. Okay. So, so like you might train in the morning, and then you'll have like downtown, down downtime, and like you'll all eat together, like be in each other's rooms, do activities together. So you all like mingle and that's how I made friends in camp. Sick. That I still talk to you now. <laughs> all you blue ticked, <laughs> all you verified people are just mixing and mingling. Um, Windrush Way, I'm so sorry to interrupt. I I remember being in, was it in the um, town hall? Town hall, in the chambers, yeah. Yourself, myself, Olivier, Brooke, yeah. Um, we're there to to change the name yeah. of the street. We petitioned the council because the you know that at that time 
people were looking at ways in a, a way that they could commemorate the Windrush generation. So I think people really don't grasp what that generation did, you know, from their home places. It wasn't just Jamaica or Trinidad, you know, there were some West Africans, you know, Nigerians, Ghanaians, whatever, yeah, Sierra Leoneans, I know some, some came here, both here and, and in Doncaster. Uh, of course, from the Indian subcontinent as well. It was a commonwealth that came after the war effort, you know, to try and literally rebuild this country. You know, there were jobs, building trade, transport, NHS, that the whole population didn't want to do. That's the bottom line. Because if they did, you know, there wouldn't have been room for people from the commonwealth to come in. And one thing I would like to say on that is that there's this massive scandal now you know, this so-called hostile environment that was created by the Home Office when Theresa May was uh, uh, Home Secretary. They created this hostile environment where they basically destroyed the evidence to show that these people had a right to be, to be here. Yeah, yeah. And destroyed it. And then made them fight their way out. There was a case just on the news, I think, um, Monday, I think it was, where a, a woman had finally got back into England after been to like, to like 10 years, years previous, yeah, lost a house, a lost benefit, everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but she's finally got, uh, got back in. But what, what people don't realise is that my parents mm-hmm. came to England in 19... My dad came in 57, I think. My mum came in 58. No, so he came both first in 57. No, 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 no. Okay. They met in Sheffield. Okay. They met in Sheffield. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think they both came in 57. Okay. Um, cause my eldest brother was born 58. So they both, they, they met in Sheffield, but when they came here, or when they were born in Jamaica, well, my dad was born 1934, I think. He was born a British citizen. There was no Jamaican flag. But yeah, look, my first one should have been, do I remember, you? Like, you have so many of them. She, yeah, she was about, she was about four, she was about four, and then the other one about two. two. Were you worried in any case that you might be missing or anything like Yeah, of course, man. Of course yeah. I was, yeah. Of course, of course I was, yeah. It, it, it touched me still. It's like, one of my daughters, she come in, um, I think, yeah, once on a visit and just like all searching and napping. Oh, and like, she had to tell her baby mom now, nah, loud that you're not coming again. Mm-hmm. And I even had to just cut the relationship. Yeah, more of a baby mom because seeing some manager like be on the phone and they be slamming the thing that because the girl's not picking up. Niceness, yeah. niceness. So before we get into it, give thanks for coming down. Mm-hmm. Listen, check the job. This is the job. Okay, as well, I said, yo, I'm downstairs. So I'm like, yeah, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> well, now I said, yeah, I'm in the lobby now because you've been waiting all day. Well, downstairs. <laughs> Nowhere to be seen. Asha, where's the kid? Oh, 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 she was in the bathroom doing makeup and things. I said, what? We didn't have time oh. to get ready this morning. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I was running late. And then I remember one time he came and he was like, you knew, he was like, mom, I need some money. And you're like, what for now, love? And he goes, oh, I probably need about a grand though. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And like, it wasn't no, it was like, yeah, a grand. What for, my love? Oh, I'm, I'm performing with Skepta. And um, I was like, yeah, Damn. in Magaluf. BBK. And I was like, when when are you going, my darling? Tomorrow? With? Oh, JK's going. So I thought, right, JK looks after him, right? That's whew, that's good. And you're flying from where? And that was it. Money went into his account. And that was... Gone. And he performed with people that he'd always looked up to and were inspired by. And so, as, as somebody that young, should I have let him go? As a mum, absolutely not. Am I glad mm. he let him, I let him go? Absolutely. I'm sure he spot that into existence that that collab because he was you look at Joshua's life and mm. his his journey as depths man mm. the way the stars aligned for him Mad. and for him to be who he became was the blessing that he needed to feel before he left mm. you know um and yeah it's really strange i can't explain that but mm. He needed to be, you know, he never got musically mm. where he could have been, where he could have achieved that, you know, and I've never think that was taken for him, from him. He had to achieve happiness and peace. You know, what would have been as Depp's man, he probably would have been one of the biggest artists to be in this country. And... I was just about to ask that as well. I just yeah. Wondering. You know, so I think, you know, I think for Josh, um, you know, it was only few months before he died that we were then talking about right 
second album, UK tour. Mobiles, bits, everything. everything and you know, that it would have just, it would have come. There was a time where like, I didn't want to be a footballer. Like there was a times where I was just going for a period of time where I was just playing, I was terrible. Like I didn't want to play football anymore. I was just like, yeah, I've had enough. Mm. And then my dad was like, I'd give me advice. You know, telling me like what I needed to hear, and I was like, "Yeah, like um, I'll come back." At what age was that then? Was that like early teens? It was in like before I got signed. So like, I'd say about about a year ago. Is it? Yeah. That. And look what's happened. Yeah. Like, imagine if she would have given up. Mm. I just I don't know. We, like. When it was a constant thing, like I wasn't getting better, like I was just average, like I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't playing like how I knew that I could play. And it was just getting to me, like I was like, yeah, now nah, I don't want to do this again. Because they live the lifestyle and they've got a notoriety or a reputation, it's kind of like that is an anchor, that's still an anchor because yeah. even though they're trying to reach out, and do better things for themselves, they've still got yeah. the anchor that says, no, yeah. you're this person mm. from this ilk, and we do things in this way. Yeah. You get me? And if you're like, well, pfft, yeah. we don't have to prove nothing. I don't, I don't need to prove nothing. I'm a man of my word. It's do you know what I mean? If I've it's always power. said from time, if I'm going to get you, I'll get you. If I'm going to help you with you, I'll, I'll like you. If I don't like you, I'll say, yo, move, I don't like you. I'm a man of my word, so whether you like me or not, I don't business. But it's not about me. It's about the future, Sheffield. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. South Yorkshire. It's not about me no more. Done. Mm -hmm. Do you get me? I respect Keep it. Keep it. Do you know what I mean? Because it's not going to get you nowhere apart from the can. Or you're going to be in a box early. A chocolate box early. Mm -hmm. One or two. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I think the council got embarrassed into, into housing us. And I think they must have thought, I know what we'll do with these Negroes. <laughs> we'll ship them out to Parson Cross. See how long they last there. Yeah, they won't survive up there, will yeah, they? Predominantly white area, yeah. skinheads, rough round there still. Yeah, but as rough. it happens, you know, we moved there in 1968, and my mum still lives there in the same house. She bought it. Uh, early 1980s, she bought it. Mm. And she bought it as a matter of principle. Mm. To you say, know, yeah. That's her piece have of England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Huh? yeah. I feel me place this, I feel me. Yeah. All right? Yeah. And, do you know, apart from some stuff at school, I personally didn't have uh, a lot of the raw racism mm, mm, mm. Um, thrown at me. Mm. There were some things at school, but I mean, I, I, Odd sneakers, aren't they? I don't often Odd been bad. called the N-word, that didn't happen, but we were a large family. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if the stereotype of black people can like help yeah, that situation, yeah, yeah. but there were seven of us, yeah. you know, ranging from pack. newborn yeah, yeah. to 10 years old. That's true. Entourage. There were a series of large families on the street uh, yeah. where, where, where my mum lives or uh, where we lived. Um, and we got on. Um, in hindsight, my mum and dad did a lot of work around race relations. They used to hold house parties and invite the whole neighbourhood and beyond. We were famous with house parties throughout the 60s and 70s into the 80s. And my mum and dad afforded all the food to feed a house full people standing up, talking 40 plus people, yeah? How they afforded all the food for that, that was just cooked throughout the night and ongoing, and all the drinks. I, I, I don't know how they afforded that, but they did. But that's not all you've done, no. really, is it? So, mm -hmm. so, 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 for those who don't know, these ladies had the first podcast in Sheffield. Um, <laughs> Well, I definitely the first girls podcast. Yeah. Well, yeah. do you know what? I think it was the first one, you know, because I remember popping up to you like, oh, like, um, how was it on Spotify? And, oh, yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, oh, like, I, I was very early into the, yeah. to the scene. So um, what was that called? It's called the Girls Couch Podcast. Girls Couch okay. Podcast. Yeah, we did that. We said that because we, we were just that. like, we were trying to think of a name. We were thinking of all these like, <laughs> crazy names. Like, Roman something. 
something crazy. Like, man, crazy. But was that all we ever do when we're together? Yeah. I sit on a couch, drink and tea, and talk. talk. Yeah. So it was like, the girls' couch is yeah. perfect. It's chill, relaxed. Yeah. And we're always literally on the couch. couch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, documenting this. Yeah, I've yeah. seen a couple of episodes. I see one with Mans. Oh, yeah. Shout out, Mans. Go check Winging It, Sheffield Plate. Yeah. Best wings in town. Literally. Best wings ever. Mm. So, uh, are you bringing it back? Like, wow, 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 is it just <laughs> there? Know, is it we, sleeping we right now? We're saying that we're going to bring it back. And, like, we're still getting, like, downloads and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, we keep getting downloads. Yeah. We're not, we've literally not both been on the page, like, two years. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how yeah. long, but we keep getting downloads. And we're like, mm-hmm. should we bring it yeah. back? And then we, when we see people, they're like, oh, yeah, we've watched up. So I'm like, how, <laughs> like, <laughs> how the hell is ages ago? But <clears throat> I don't know if we want to, but mm-hmm. again, it's... I think this has gave us a confidence yeah. doing this event. We lack confidence mm-hmm. on like doing things. Even though we did it, it was successful. We kept going. Like we had all the equipment to do it, but it's like every episode we're like, I don't know, yeah. we doubt ourselves. I think as well, we we do wanna like come back with the Girls Card podcast. However, we just wanna do it if we know we're gonna be consistent. Yeah, we don't wanna do it again and then fall off because I think that's like just we've done that twice yeah, already. We've done that twice already. We've had like done a bit had a little bit of a break and we're just like we actually if we want to do it we need to make sure we can be committed and be consistent mm-hmm. so i think that's what stopped us because we're just like can we we're very find time laid back, very laid back. <laughs> too laid back <laughs> <laughs> there's us a lot so like yeah because we're very laid back we're just like we need to know we're gonna be on it mm-hmm. well yeah, and this one now so yeah yeah, yeah. can no more collabs yeah mm-hmm. yeah Change up the content a little piece. Yeah, that's what we definitely yeah. want to change. Like, if we do it, like, yeah. change the kind of. We've been through a lot since. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. A lot since the last episode. Yeah, we've got a lot to chat about. about. A lot to talk about. Yeah, yeah. but we're here, we're here for it. We're here for it. Yeah. Cool. Hopefully, maybe 2023. 2023. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, don't keep pushing it back, you know. <laughs> no. Well, we don't even have time. We've got yeah. to black yeah. own now as well. So. Yeah. And our other friend has a business venture as well. Yeah. So, yeah, hopefully. No, serious things. Do you think it's important as a coach? So obviously, you know, knowing that some of the best coaches to have ever lived have never, well, I wouldn't say I've never laced. Really a bust, yeah, never. Yeah. I wouldn't say never laced to prepare with gloves because you know most, you know, they would have sparred, they would have yeah, got trained yeah, yeah. at some point. But would you, do you think it's important for for coaches to have like professional experience in the ring themselves? Yeah. Or do you think it doesn't matter as such as long as they've been around it? For as long so as they've long been around long. it, I, I don't say it doesn't matter. But like, if I was with a coach and in certain points they were, you could I could see that inexperience. Now we're going through a tough time. Yeah, I just look at them like, yo, yeah. you, you are yeah. not going through what yeah. I'm, you've well, never I'm been through. What I'm yeah, going through, yeah, yeah, or you don't trenches. know what I'm going through. So like. It does and it doesn't. So I've always thought it's crazy. Point. I said, Manny Stewart, I, if, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to sound stupid. I believe Manny Stewart didn't actually box. I think he might, sure. might have done a bit of amateurs in that, but I think the story of Manny Stewart is he started um, training his cousin or yeah. his brother. Well, Joe McKellen's boss. Emmanuel Stewart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 Sugar, yeah. Sugar Hill's um, yeah, 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 uncle. Yeah. You want a Tyson Fury? And yeah, Tyson, this is through Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury's with Sugar Hill. Yeah, Manny yeah. Stewart's his uncle. Yeah. He's trained Lennox Lewis. He's trained, honestly, some of the greatest fighters to have ever lived. <laughs> but I think it was something stupid. Like, he uh, started training his cousin, and within, like, two or three months, his cousin won the Golden Gloves. Yeah. And then that was when he was kind of like, right, well, maybe I should. Some people you know just got I mean, it. Some people like, are like, yeah. typical analysis, like, Grant hasn't, hasn't boxed. ever boxed, competed, but he obviously trained and whatnot. Yeah. But he didn't, he didn't fight. He was a very, very good footballer. But when you've got it, you've got it. When you can yeah. break oh. it down, like, in perfect detail and see what's coming and see what's working, then you don't need to have... I think Enzo boxed. Calzaghi's a great example yeah. of that. Jo- Joe's, Joe's dad. Joe Enzo, rest in peace to Enzo Calzaghi, but... Fighters, but he, yeah, he's a big fan of Joe. Yeah. But Enzo Calzaghi, I believe, he moved to Wales from yeah. Italy yeah. and literally just started working at the gym as a cleaner, mm-hmm. I believe, and then yeah, ended up, tra- and then ended up like training well. with the guy. And then, you're, and then you're, taking, you're taking everything in and... That's what boxing is. Like yeah. if you're in the if you're in or around boxing long enough, you're gonna get something out of it. Yeah. And that's one thing Liam always says to me is like, yo, Levi, listen, make sure that you're in and around everywhere you can be, every show you can be at, everywhere that boxing takes you, just be there and do that. Like so every opportunity I get, I'm there.